So, hi everybody, welcome to my video about ibuprofen. This is the professional edition, which has more in-depth information. There's also a patient version. You can find the link in the description. It's way more to the point. It might be more suitable for you. So, feel free to check it out. Um, without further ado, let's get into the video. So, first of all, a little disclaimer. Uh, this is purely informational, not medical advice. And if you want medical advice, please uh, contact your own physician. Now, let's get into the video um, regarding synonyms and brands. Ibuprofen is an NSAID, which stands for Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drug. And this is a group of analgetics um, like naproxen, diclofenac, and ibuprofen. In this video, I will focus mostly on ibuprofen. There will be other videos on the other NSAIDs. So, ibuprofen inhibits the production of prostaglandins and does this through the inhibition of COX. The generic name is ibuprofen it's in USA and in Europe, and common brand names are Brufen, Advil, Moltrin, and Nurofen. Ibuprofen is available in tablets, capsules, degree, uh, and suspensions. Can be used uh, for pain, fever, and it has some off label usages. It leads to an analgetic, antipyretic, and an anti inflammatory effect. It can be used for any type of pain headaches, migraine, post operative pain, uh, dysmenorrhea, uh, muscle pains, tendonitis, you name it, it will help to lower the pain. It will also lower fever, therefore, it can be used in any kind of fever like the flu, common cold, or even after vaccinations. And off-label, it can be used for abnormal vaginal blood loss caused by a myoma or without a specific cause. And some advice, um, if you use it as a painkiller, you should use a step-by-step -step approach. So um, I always start with paracetamol, it says the least side effects is the cheapest and as the most experienced, so therefore we always start with paracetamol and go to the next step when there is insufficient pain relief, there are contraindications for one of the steps or there is a specific indication like uh, oncological pain, then you usually need to start at step 3 or 4. So if paracetamol is not enough, you go to the NSAIDs like ibuprofen and you can combine them with paracetamol. Next step would be tramadol, which is a weak opioid. Um, and tramadol is preferably used with paracetamol and, uh, for example, ibuprofen. So you can use lower amounts of tramadol, experience less side effects, um, and it's all beneficial. Step four is oral or transdermal strong opioids like morphine or fentanyl. And the last step would be subcutaneous or intravenous strong opioids, uh, mostly morphine. If you use it uh, for migraine, then the first step in adults will always be paracetamol. It has the same effectiveness as NSAIDs or oral triptans, but there's way less side effects and it's cheaper as well. If, however, for some reason this is insufficient, you go to step two and finally to step three. For children, uh, step one is paracetamol or ibuprofen. The next step would be oral triptans. So keep this in mind when uh, taking or prescribing ibuprofen for these indications. Regarding dosage and usage, uh, always use the lowest amount possible, uh, which still is effective. Now, how do you use it? Uh, preferably on an empty stomach, um, then it uh, works fastest, and you can take doses between four and six hours. Uh, for children, this is at least six hours. How long do you use it? Uh, till complaints are over. So at least uh, till complaints are over. If this takes more than two weeks, please contact your doctor because maybe another uh, medication or treatment would be better for you. If you take it for headaches, uh, make sure to only do so short term because if you use it more than three, four weeks, uh, ibuprofen can lead to headaches and uh, this is counterproductive. If you use it for migraines, make sure to only do it when you have migraine attacks. And if you have more than two migraine attacks per month, this also might be a reason to contact your doctor because then maybe uh, some preventive therapy can be started. Regarding the safety, one of the side effects of ibuprofen is dizziness, vertigo, 
or fatigue you. Um, if you experience those, it's not safe to drive, so please don't do so. And if you don't experience these side effects, it's perfectly safe to drive with ibuprofen. Regarding uh, alcohol, um, ibuprofen and other NSAIDs can lead to gastrointestinal effects like nausea, vomiting, etc., gastritis. Uh, alcohol can do mostly the same, so they can, um, if you're experiencing those side effects, it's good to not use alcohol. Try it first uh, moderately to see what effect it has on you. Regarding food, there are no restrictions. Then there are some reasons when you have to contact your doctor. If you're using ibuprofen and still need it uh, after more than 24 hours of use in children from three to five months, and more than three days of use for children from six months to 18 years. If you still use it after three days of use while maintaining a fever, or after five days with increasing pain. So make sure to contact your doctor in any of these cases. So let us get started with the dosages. When you use ibuprofen for a fever or a pain, in adults or children older than 12 years or more than 40 kilograms, use 400 milligrams and add two to 400 every four to six hours if necessary to a maximum of 1200 milligrams uh, per day. If your child is older than three months, the maximum is 20 to 30 milligrams per kilogram and three to four doses uh, for a maximum of three days. So keep that in mind. When using it for joint disorders like uh, rheumatoid arthritis or arthrosis, Higher dosages are allowed. Uh, adults can use 1200 to 1600 milligrams a day, divided over three to four doses. And in severe cases, uh, short-term use can be even higher to 2400 and divided over four doses. Um, ch children older than two years can use 20 milligrams per kilogram in three to four doses. And lastly, uh, when using ibuprofen for migraine, in adults and children older than 12 years, use 400 milligrams if needed every four to six hours to a maximum of 1200 milligrams an hour. And for children, you can use this table. Feel free to pause at any time. So let's get to the next topic, the side effects. Um, let me move my head again. <laughs> there are a lot of side effects. Uh, most of them aren't uh, that bad. Very often, more than 10% of all cases, we see diarrhea or dyspepsia. Uh, often, that's 1% to 10%, we see headaches, dizziness, gastrointestinal disorders, fatigue. Sometimes, that's uh, a tenth of a percent to a percent, we see uh, allergic reactions, mount ulcera, hepatitis, rhinitis, hearing loss, anxiety, and, and some more. Feel free to pause them. I won't name them all. The same can be said uh, for these. These we see rarely. Um, these are more severe as well. Meningitis, depression, perforations. These are really side effects which you don't want. And very rarely uh, we see uh, hypertension, vasculitis, um, nervousness. Feel free once again to pause uh, when you want to see them in more detail. So if experiencing any of these uh, severe side effects, always make sure to contact your doctor. Now, regarding the interactions, ibuprofen and most NSAID have a lot. Uh, here I named the most common one. Uh, if combined with oral anticoagulants, it may lead to an increased risk of bleeding. When combined with an SSRI, or antithrombotics or corticosteroids, it may lead to, uh, lead to an increased risk of gastrointestinal complication. And this is especially true in elderly. Um, so I always use the lowest possible dose for the shortest duration and consider the starting uh, PPI, a proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole to lower the chances of gastrointestinal complications. You cannot combine uh, ibuprofen with other NSIDs or ibuprofen. Also, when combined with diuretics, cyclosporins or traco tracolimus, may lead to increased uh, nephrotoxicity and also when combined with a RAS inhibitor in a patient with an impaired kidney function it can lead to even worse kidney insufficiencies and lastly the plasma levels of digoxin, uh, fentanyl, and 
methotrexate and lithium may increase when combined with ibuprofen. So please take those in mind if prescribing ibuprofen for a patient with any of these uh, other co-medications. So let us go to pregnancy and lactation. Regarding pregnancy, ibuprofen passes the placenta and is not safe to use in the third not third trimester. In the first one, it could be used on those uh, very strict indications of the, uh, the prescribing doctor, but the third, third trimester is a contraindication and uh, usage may lead to uh, abortion or malformation, so please don't do so. If prescribing uh, ibuprofen for a patient, a female patient who wants to become pregnant, uh, you need to know that ibuprofen may lead to uh, have negative effects on female fertility which is reversible after quitting ibuprofen. For lactation, ibuprofen passes in breast milk but is safe to use. However, it's recommended to only do so short-term, low dosages uh, for uh, severe amounts of pain or fever. So be conservative uh, regarding pregnancy and lactation. Then there are some contraindications, gastric ulcers, uh, bleedings, gastritis, also an active ulcer uh, ulcerative colitis or morbus Crohn, cerebrovascular or other bleedings, um, increased bleeding tendencies, allergic reaction in the past on ibuprofen or another NSID, uh, severe renal or hepatic impairment, heart failure and dehydration. Always check those uh, before prescribing ibuprofen. Then some warnings and precautions. Oh, we already had this one. Let me see some warnings and precautions. Start with the lowest doses possible. Consider a proton pump inhibitor for mostly elderly patients. Alcohol may increase the side effects, especially the gastrointestinal. So take this into account. Stop with ibuprofen when you have the deviated blood values, severe liver insufficiencies ulcerous bleedings or hypersensitive reactions for long-term uses uh, it may increase headaches and if used for more than three months uh, you should routinely check blood assay liver and kidney functions and some cases uh, someone will use overdose of ibuprofen it's rarely symptomatic if uh, less than 100 milligrams per kilogram is used can be symptomatic in adults uh, upwards of 200 milligrams per kilogram and for children upwards 400 milligrams per kilogram. But the symptoms usually will start uh, four to six hours after the intake and uh, mostly it's nausea, stomach pain, abdominal pain, vomiting, uh, blurred vision and in severe cases even acute kidney failure and liver damage. So take that in mind. Lastly, I will end with some kinetic properties. Resorption is quick orally, T max orally is one to two hours. Uh, dividing volume is uh, 0.15 liters per kilogram. The protein binding is almost 100%. It's metabolized by the liver and active metabolites. Elimination is mostly done by urine. And um, in two hours half of the values in your blood is eliminated. So this is my short summary of ibuprofen. The other NSIDs will follow soon. Um, if you like the content feel free to subscribe. I will be making more videos. And if you're a patient and you want a more to the point um, video please check the one in the description. Thanks for watching and see you soon.